Methadone is an outstanding analgesic. It has a long half-life, which can be very tricky, of course, but it gives the patient the flexibility of only having to take their analgesic twice a day. It also has multiple mechanisms of action over and above the other opioids. Certainly it's a mu receptor agonist, but it's also an N-methyl deaspartate receptor antagonist, which I believe gives it a little bit of an edge on neuropathic pain compared to the other opioids. And it has a mild effect to inhibit the reuptake of serotonin. So you have a multiple mechanistic analgesic that you can dose twice a day. And it's inherently long acting. It's not pharmaceutically altered to be long acting. Practicing in hospice and palliative care, I'm also very fond of the fact that it does, does come in two oral solution concentrations. So for our patients who are very ill and cannot swallow tablets or capsules, it's very useful to be able to use the methadone 10 milligram per ml oral solution, and you can usually put it in the buccal cavity and it slowly trickles down the throat. So it's very useful from that perspective. We have to be careful though with the dosing of methadone. Certainly everyone is aware of the issues with the cardiac toxicity and how it can and prolong the QT interval, predisposing the patient to the potentially fatal arrhythmia towards side to point. So the American Pain Society and other groups have promulgated guidelines for the safe use of methadone. So when should you get an EKG prior to starting therapy? For example, a good candidate is someone with a QTC less than 450 milliseconds. You have to be very careful between 450 and 500, and it's ill-advised to use it over 500 milliseconds. I also was very fortunate to head a group that considered these safety and efficacy guidelines as developed by the American Pain Society in the context of using it in a hospice and palliative care patient. So we're working on a white paper for that right now, but I think it really helps give guidance to people caring for patients who have a life-limiting illness. Methadone is an opioid that requires very careful consideration before going down that road. So who do I think is an inappropriate candidate? Certainly in the hospice environment, someone who is very close to the end of the road. If someone will be gone before we hit steady state, I really think twice about it. And certainly anyone who is exhibiting the risk factors that will heighten the risk for potentially side to point. People who have hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, a congenital defect that prolongs their QT interval, a family history of QT prolongation unexplained syncope or seizures. So all of those have to be considered. Also, I look closely at what other medications the patient is taking. I think methadone could be the poster child drug and we could use the, just that one drug to teach all the pharmacy school because it has so much going on. There are so many medications that interact with methadone, it's more the exception than the rule when you talk about that. So certainly I have to consider that. Some induce the metabolism of methadone and some inhibit it. Also, I think twice about a patient who lives alone, has poor cognitive to functioning or a patient who I believe for whatever reason is not going to follow the prescribed regimen uh, for whatever reason. On the other hand, who's a good candidate for methadone? Uh, people who um, are accepting of as an analgesic, many patients tell me, no way I'm not going to use that drug. That's what you use for heroin addicts when in fact we use it as an analgesic even before we used it for patients recovering from heroin abuse. So someone who's accepting of the molecule, methadone, who understands the dosing and Instructions and knows this is not a drug that they can take on their own to increase or decrease as they see fit. It, it, again, it's very nice that we can dose it twice a day and it gives patients a very smooth response. So monitoring is very important with all opioids, but in particular, methadone therapy. Certainly, as I've mentioned before, we have the guidelines on checking the EKG before and during therapy, so that is critically important. And then we have all the usual and customary monitoring that we should do, both for therapeutic effectiveness and for toxicity. The garden variety side effects such as nausea, vomiting, constipation, dizziness, sedation, drowsiness, confusion, all go along with opioid therapy. I always look at the other medications the patient is taking. If they're also taking a benzodiazepine, that increases the risk as well. And of course, with any opioid, we have to monitor for subjective and objective parameters for success as well. Is the patient meeting their pain goal? Are they hitting their pain rating? And more, more importantly, are they improving their functional status?